So, hello, uh, my name is Dae Jun. Uh, I'm going to talk about the language independent verification framework. Okay, so let's start with a motivation. So, we have two problems with the state of the art program verification tools. So, let's look at this simple example. So, we have a simple program, three lines of code. We have two variables. Uh, first, x is assigned with the unsigned integer maximum value, and y becomes uh, x plus 1. And the question is, what is the value of the y in the end? So according to the C11 language standard, uh, the unsigned integer has no overflow. So in this case, y becomes 0 because it's wrapping around this ma maximum value. But the problem is the VCC, the one of the state of the R tools, failed to prove this program just provides some wrong error message saying that y has overflow. Okay. Uh, let's look at another program. So we have assignment function, which takes two arguments and assign the second argument's value into the uh, first argument's location. And in the main function, we have a two uh, call this assignment function with the same vari uh, variable r with a different value 0 and 1. And the question is, what's the final value of the r in the end? Well, it depends on which evaluation order was taken in the line 10. So if the first left-hand side is taken first, then the r becomes 1 in the end. Otherwise, r becomes 0. So this, we have these two possibilities. So the assertion in the line 11 doesn't hold. But problem is, VCC again proved this program because they missed this non-determinist behavior of the line 10. Okay? Now this is not only problems for VCC. Many tools have similar problem. And for example, recently it turns out that at least 14% of benchmarks programs used in SVComp, which is the competition for the verification tools, are undefined. What does it mean? It means that, roughly speaking, many of these verification tools proved wrong programs. So how to fix this problem? Well, it's very hard to fix the problem because all this problem is due to mainly because these tools missed the precise reasoning about the language semantics. And this precise reasoning of language semantics requires huge effort. For example, just simply describing what behaviors, all the details, took several years. So it's too much to ask them to support this as well as all the verification techniques itself. So the question is how to reduce this burden from the verification experts so that they just focus on their own stuff without worrying about this tedious uh, semantic reason. Okay, so that's the first problem. Uh, second problem is this: many of these verification tools are specific to the, a fixed language. So, for example, we have all, all kinds of useful static analysis tools, but many of them are just available for fixed language. So, for example, it's not easy to use this one of these tools for another language. But actually, these tools are implemented a very similar optimization and heuristic because they share in the very core functionalities like how to prune the search spaces, how to e have efficient data structures, or how to abstract the domains. So all these things are re-implemented whenever they come up with the new tools. And the question is how to reuse these efforts without duplicating them. So that's the second question. So our solution for this problem is essentially uh, separation of concerns. So we wanted to clearly separate the semantic reasoning from the verification technique itself so that the expert just working on their own stuff without, without worrying about the others. And at the same time, we wanted to provide a very smooth integration so that all the techniques are simply used by just combining with the others. So 
for example, the language expert just specify all kinds of the languages, semantics across all the versions without thinking about the verification. And the verification engineer just implement all kinds of new techniques, all kinds of verification techniques without worrying about the semantics reasoning. Okay? That happens, if that happens, then you users are free to combine any of these two to get any combination. For example, if you pick the C semantics and verification engine, you get the C verifiers like VCC. If you pick C semantics and model checking engine, then you get the C model checker like VC VMC. If you pick Java instead, you get the Java uh, model checker like Java Pacify. Okay? So in this way, we can reduce the burden of the semantic reasoning from the verification uh, experts, and also at the same time, we can reuse all the verification techniques into all the other languages. Okay, that's our vision. So, in order to realize this vision, we propose a language independent verification framework uh, as follows. So, in the core of our verification framework, we have language independent logic which will serve as a uniform notation in which you specify semantics and program properties. Okay. And in this logic level, programs and uh, semantics and program uh, properties nothing but formulas uh, in, in this logic. So that means the verification task so to reduce to the checking validity of the implication from the semantics to the properties. Okay? And then, under this logic, we only need to have a proof system and proof automation. Okay? And uh, in this verification framework, under this logic, everything is completely language independent. They have no idea about what program language is because all these semantics and properties just parameter of this uh, framework. So in this way, we clearly separate this semantics into the framework, and also all the techniques implemented in the framework can be easily reuse the others, just com uh, instantiating our framework. Okay. So uh, this is our framework, and let's look at a little bit details about each component. So semantics, so we take the operational semantics as our semantics input for many regions. First, operational semantics is easier to define and understand than ax axiomatic semantics. It requires little knowledge about the mathematics of foundations, so even the undergraduate students can specify operational semantics once they have some um, simple training. Okay? And also, operational semantics very by its nature, is very easily executable, so it can be tested. And this testability is known to be very important when you, especially when you define large language semantics. And in this, it's shown to be scaled to define realistic large languages like C and Java and JavaScript. So that's why we took this operational semantics hour as input. Next, that logic, the language independent logic, we call uh, reachability logic in which you can specify both the language semantics and properties. So the reachability logic formula is given this, in this form. It's nothing but a pair of two pattern formulas. What does it mean is any state that's satisfied by first pattern formula will reach eventually the one of the another states the, uh, satisfied by second pattern formula. Okay? And this pattern formula each pattern formula is nothing but a first logic formula without the predicate symbols, uh, but we have a function symbol. You can simply think about this as uh, algebraic data types uh, with variables when you use in the pattern matching construct in functional language like OCaml and Haskell. And this is uh, how reachability formula looks like. And in this formula, we will specify both the semantics and the properties. I'll look at uh, how, how, how to uh, specify them. So first, the semantics. So, so operational semantics is specified in a set of reachability formulas 
in which each formula is corresponding to a, each step of evaluations. So for example, here is a simple implementation of uh, interpreter of, about uh, calculation language uh, written in OCaml. So here we have a case analysis. For each case, we specify how this language construct evaluates the next step. Okay? And this case analysis can be seen as a just set of reachability form, uh, logic formula. So each case just becomes a reachability logic formula. So just set of just reachability logic formula for each evaluation steps becomes uh, operational semantics. That's simple. Next, properties. Uh, so here we are interested in the program's input and output behaviors properties. That means in pre and post condition of the program. So this pre and post condition is very suitable to describe in the reachability load because we can just put the precondition in the left hand side and the post condition in the right hand side. Okay? For example, this is a, a specification of the insert function of the binary search tree. And precondition says we have a binary search tree, and post condition says we have another binary search tree, but the keys are inserted. Okay? And this pre and post condition can be specified in the stability logic uh, as follows. Just you putting just precondition in the left hand side with the programs and then post condition in the right hand side. Okay. So this reachability logic formula is known uh, it turns out to be quite effective, e expressive to specify other uh, property. So first, this pre and post condition is essentially the whole triple. So if you can describe your property in the whole triple, whole logic, you can do that in this way. And also, it turns out that it can specify safety properties, arbitrary safety properties, uh, if we a uh, little bit augmenting the semantics uh, with some additional information. But uh, we cannot describe the liveness property, which is uh, we are working on extending it to uh, support this. But for now, it cannot. And this each pattern formula is also quite ex expressive. So you can just put any recursive predicate as well as any separation logic predicates. Uh, so uh, already we can uh, specify all kind of complicated heap pattern structure as well. So it's quite expressive for now already. So now the programs and property is specified in this reachability logic formula. And all we need to do is that that property uh, specified in the reachability logic formula is valid or not. Okay? So that's why I need a proof system to derive all the valid formula about this reachability logic. So this is our proof system. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but you can just see that we have only eight inference rules. Uh, so that's simple. So we, that's all you need. And then this proof system is to drive this form of sequence. Uh, in the left hand side, we have a, a semantics. Just it's nothing but all set of reachability logic formula for each step of evaluation step, which we trust and we believe. So we take this as axiom. And then the right hand side, we have the property that reachability loss formula we want to prove. Okay. And this proof system can be used to drive this sequence uh, using the eight inference rules. And for example, we can just put the insert function that uh, specification in the right hand side, and then the semantics function, the simple semantics function in the left hand side, and more. Uh, and then you can see that this is valid or not. So now we have our best effort to implement the proof automation. Uh, so this proof system has just provides a way to derive all the valid formula, but we want it to automatically generate these proof trees for each formula. So this framework, in theory, has uh, no requirements about this how, what kind of proof automation techniques are used. But you are free to implement any proof techniques. But for now, we implemented just a deductive verification techniques. So for this, 
we have a symbolic execution engine to search all the reachability space. Also, we have domain reasoning using the G3, uh, like domain reasoning, like big vectors, integer floating point numbers, set, uh, sequence, anything. So with the uh, combination of the G3. And also, we have a uh, quantified uh, instantiation technique for heap patterns uh, used in uh, like list and tree specification. Um, yeah, but that's all. That's all we have. So we have this uh, lang language independent verification framework, and I just show you the semantics and logic and proof system uh, and the proof estimation. So, what is the trust space of this system? So, first, semantics we have to trust. I mean, uh, there's no, no other way. We have to trust semantics because uh, that's what it is. Uh, and the proof system. Uh, you don't need our. Uh, you don't uh, need to trust our proof system. Uh, our proof system sound and com sound and relatively completeness is proved, and the soundness proofs are mechanized in, in call. So you only trust them in call. So you don't need to trust our proof system. Okay. And the proof automation. Uh, in theory, we proof automation can generate proof scripts that can be checked by again call. But for now, we didn't uh, generate the proof script yet. So. Uh, for now, we have to trust our proof, proof automation technique, but it's a way to uh, take our picture of this uh, trust space. Okay, so good. So far, so good. So then question is, how does it really work, this framework? So for example, how easy to instantiate this framework when, and next question is, is it too slow? I mean, is it too general? I mean, this, at all the benefits of generality comes with the cost, right? So you might think that, oh, my P is too slow. You should be very specific for the single language to have get the best performance, OK? So we want to evaluate this framework. OK, so we first uh, instantiated our framework with the three different language semantics, uh, uh, C and Java and JavaScript. Uh, we just took the existing semantics. All these semantics are done before our not before, independently our framework. So they just implemented this, uh, specified this semantics without looking at our verification framework, but just more general than the, not, nothing to the specific to the verification. And we just took the semantics, and then we plug in our, our framework, and we get the verifier for each language, OK? And then using this verifier, we verified several challenging small uh, uh, heap manipulation programs. And we measure the performance and the effort. So this is the effort we instantiated uh, with our framework. Uh, so it took the several days, uh, which include we fix some bugs in the semantics. Uh, also, we have to specify heap uh, abstraction for each languages. So this list and tree, we don't know how to this list and tree is actually realized in the each memory, uh, language memory model. So we have to specify how these abstractions are uh, actually realized in the, the concrete program state. So that's all we uh, had to do in, to instantiate our framework. So quick comparison. Uh, this is uh, our effort spent on defining, specifying language semantics. You can see uh, this is not our work. This is just uh, given. Uh, as you can see, it took several months to several years to specify language semantics. It's a huge effort. That's why we wanted to separate uh, uh, this, this reasoning. So um, yeah, and we believe that we can also easily instantiate the other language of, uh, semantics with this as well. Uh, this is the uh, performance of our framework. The, our verifier instantiate our, uh, from the, our framework. Uh, so we s verified several heap manipulation programs, which include uh, binary search tree, a well tree, and red black tree, which is quite complicated. Uh, and we have tree and several list sorting algorithm over, over the list. And we verified full functional correctness, like uh, the insert function specification that I showed you. Uh, and performance. Uh, so I believe our performance is quite reasonable and comparable. So as a quick comparison, 
we picked a state-of-the-art uh, heat verification tools for C languages. And, and the comparison result is quite promising. We, uh, for example, the AVL insert function, they took uh, to 60 seconds, and we took only to 80 seconds. So I think it's quite comparable. Even if our verification framework is much uh, general and not the language specific, but it's quite comparable already, such a specific language uh, uh, verification tool. Okay, so we believe that this generality does not uh, commit uh, some losing all the performance. And this, all this is a collaboration effort. We can, we only implemented very simple deductive verification technique. If you implemented more techniques, more optimization, you all benefit from uh, all the languages. So I think it's promising direction. Okay, so this is uh, uh, our framework. Uh, to summary, we have language independent verification framework. Uh, you implement it once and can be reused all the others. Okay, and for this we have a nice in, in language independent logic, and all these are available in the GitHub, so you can freely check it out. Thank you. <laughs>